Now, Comcast beats out 21st Century Fox for Sky with a $39 billion bid. But is it paying just too much? Our senior deals reporter Ed Hammond raised that question earlier with none other than Liberty Global CEO in Denver. It's an extraordinary price. Um, I would say it's a great outcome for Sky shareholders, a, a considerable premium. And I think it also validates to a large degree uh, the value of European pay TV and broadband. I mean, there's this huge disconnect between public and private multiples. Uh, we sold some assets to Vodafone at 11 and 12 times. This deal's happening at 15 and a half times. So my first you know, reaction is it validates our business model and what we're doing. Um, my advice to Brian would be stay rational. The UK market is a highly rational market, very competitive, very promotional and transactional, but rational. I think you'll have to stay rational when you put that kind of money out. Um, but uh, you know, we're excited for the competition. We have a 50% market share of broadband and pay TV on our footprint, and the rest of the customers are shared between Sky and BT and other operators. So on our footprint, which is 14 million homes, we feel really solid and secure. And of course, we're good partners with Sky. We we buy the content, uh, football, premium movies, um, and of course their basic content. So it's a, it's a collaborative and rational market, although we're, you know, we're healthy competitors. So stay rational, uh, give it some time, um, you know, and you know, I think the price is terrific. Let's talk about the competition for a second. So under Murdoch, Sky was sort of capped in terms of doing a huge amount of expansion because of the UK media laws. Now you have a new player in the form of Comcast, very aggressive and ambitious, wanting to expand in Europe. What does that mean? What challenges does that present to Liberty Global? Not really any. Uh, it, you know, where are they operating today? They're in the UK and they're in Germany and they're in Italy, principally. And you've uh, just sold out. Yeah, Germany. we're not in Italy. We've just decided to exit the German market. And so UK is really where we'll square up. Um, Listen, the European market is, is a solid market for the space we're in. Again, compared to the U.S., there's massive differences. Uh, video is still highly relevant and relatively inexpensive. So there's a lot of OTT players in the marketplace, but they're you know, varying degrees of success. Um, and, of course, video is very inexpensive in Europe. And you live there, you remember. You were a Virgin customer, you told me. You know, for 50 pounds, you can get uh, 300 megabit broadband speed, hundreds of channels, uh, everything on your mobile phone that you want on your mobile phone, and a mobile phone from us as well, voice services. It's a pretty rational and, and, and I want to say, inexpensive market for consumers. Consumers are winning in Europe. Um, so from that point of view, I don't see, you know, I don't know what their next move will be, but in the markets they're in, we really just, UK means the most to us. So. Now, Liberty has uh, a windfall coming its way in the form of $12 billion, which is, is the proceeds from the Vodafone deal in Germany. Right, right. I know what you're going to say if I ask you what you're spending on, which is you're not going to know until you get it, probably some point next year. So let me ask this. If you were to have that money today, what would you spend it on? <laughs> It's a good question. Um, listen, I think we're pretty good allocators of capital. If you look at our history, uh, we've made, I think we've had great success buying, building, and integrating businesses, Germany being an excellent example of that. Uh, for 2 billion euros in, we're going to get 12, 13 billion euros out. I mean, it's, we know how to build, operate, and grow businesses, but we're not empire builders, right? So we're more about creating value. And where I see value today, quite frankly, is our stock, uh, which trades at you know, mid-single digits, uh, depending on how you want to do the math, compared to 12 or 15 times, as we're well, seeing well, in the let's market. Just, I just want to drill on that for a second, because, yeah, as you say, if I look at your stock, it's at about six times EV. I look at the Sky deal, and it goes through at 15 times. What are investors not giving you credit for? Well, I think we're in an interesting moment here, right at an inflection point. We don't yet have the capital. What will we do with the capital? Um, I think if you look at our business today, uh, really it's going to be pro forma for the deal, about 50, 60 percent the UK. That, we believe, is a solid growth business. Since we've owned it, we've done 5 percent EBITDA growth every year on average. And we see really good, solid growth going forward. Uh, we have a few other markets, Switzerland, uh, Belgium, and Holland, that are in different states of maturity, and we have different strategic optionality. But the UK and the cash, these are the main, main businesses for us going forward. Um, and we love the profile of our free cash flow and operating free cash flow going forward. So they could be missing a lot of things. You go through rotation in shareholders. Maybe people thought there was going to be a big exit to Vodafone, and so now they're rotating out into something else. People who believe in long-term value creation will own our stock, and I think uh, will stay in our stock. And and I'm not selling the stock, so I, I love it long term, and so does John. So, does it make sense to become a sort of more of a UK pure play over time? If these other markets, as you say, they're not as, as revenue driving um, as the UK. Listen, I think it's just by 
definition, the UK is our largest operating market, has always been, and now will be even larger, which I'm really excited about because it's a market where we see great uh, growth potential. Uh, we have a strategically complete asset in Virgin Media with uh, you know the best video offering of all, fastest broadband, mobile, three million mobile subs. So I think we've got a great opportunity in the UK, and um, it will remain the biggest growth engine. And the fact that the growth profile is changing to not just EBITDA growth, but free cash and operating free cash flow growth going forward, because we've really invested in our products and services and customers in the last few years. This is I think is a timing. yeah, we've really leaned into our customers on capacity and products and and network expansion and the fact that a lot of that we're going to start amortizing and monetizing to me is a terrific time to jump on. So now if the bet is so much in the UK at the moment, how do you play the Brexit situation? Yeah. Because you, you kind of have no choice, right? Whichever way it goes, whatever deal is struck, ultimately you're there for the long haul. So what's the what what do you want to see happen there? Well, what we all want to see happen is a rational conclusion to the negotiations uh, with speed. Now, that's, a, that's wishful thinking, perhaps. I don't know. Um, for us, you know, it's not you know, whatever happens, the impact to us will be more on consumers and the trickle-down effect on consumers than on um, trade or, or moving technology across borders, things of that nature. So we're really focused on the net impact to consumers, and a little bit of disruption you know, could result here when there's uncertainty. Um, but long term, I think the UK is a strong economy. We know that uh, it will. There will be an outcome that probably everybody's happy with here, and it'll take time. But in the meantime, that uncertainty could be a bit unstable, just for consumers and for businesses. Uh, we're still investing capital. We're not any less committed to the marketplace. But we'll all have to be patient to see what ha happens here. And that was the CEO of Liberty Global speaking with our Ed Hammond in Denver.